This is Joel Persinger. I'm the gun guy. Thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. Listen, since Governor Brown signed all these gun laws into, uh, into law, I've gotten a ton of requests and emails from people who want me to kind of go over them with you. So I'm going to do that real quick. And then um, we're also going to create some links at the end of the video so that you can go find more details so that I don't end up boring you to death reading all this stuff. But there's so much stuff, um, I kind of do have to read through it just to give you a kind of an idea. Now, he signed six uh, bills into law, two of which are almost identical to each other. So really, there's a total of five, if you kind of want to put it that way. So let's look at them individually. Uh, Senate bills 880 and 1135 are the two that are really uh, look a lot alike. And that's the whole assault weapons thing. Uh, after reading it, I discovered it really doesn't do very much. But this is what it says. Uh, these bills are roughly identical. Both bills dramatically change what constitutes an assault weapon in California. Uh, the bills do not require individuals to surrender their firearms that they currently own. So if you got an AR or something, you can, you can keep it. But you will be uh, required to either modify it so that it falls within the uh, description of a non-assault weapon, or you have to register it or you have to take it out of the state. So here, here, here's the provisions for you, specifics. The definition of an assault rifle now includes any semi-automatic center fire rifle that does not have a fixed magazine, but also has any one of the following offending features. A pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, a thumb hole stock, a folding or telescoping stock, a grenade launcher or flash uh, or flare launcher. I don't know why anybody would have a grenade launcher or flare launcher, but it'd be kind of cool. I want one, but you can't. Uh, a flash suppressor, a forward pistol grip. That's the fire or the rifles now. Now also the definition of assault weapon now also includes any semi-automatic pistol that is not just center fire, any semi-automatic pistol that does not have a fixed magazine, but has any one of the following. This is pistols now. A threaded barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer, or suppressor. A second hand grip. A shroud that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel that allows the bearer to fire the weapon without burning their hand except a slide that encloses the barrel. Now, I, what? Right. Exactly. Don't worry. I'm going to post links to these so you can get them yourself and take a look at it and try to figure it out. The capacity, or if it has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some point outside of the pistol grip, like a you know, broom handle Mauser or something like that. Uh, let's see, this bill also adds a new definition for fixed magazine, which reads, quote, an ammunition feeding device contained in or permanently attached to a firearm in such a manner that the device cannot be removed without disassembly of the firearm's action. It also provides an exception for newly classified assault weapons lawfully possessed prior to January 1, 2017. So if you already own it or you get it before January 1, you're good, so long as the person registers the firearm by January 1, 2008. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to race out and buy an AR, so you have it before January 1, 2017, it's not the purchase. It's waiting the 10 days and actually having taking possession of it. You have to take possession before January 2017. This requires any firearms lawfully purchased between January 2001 and December 31st, 2016 now classified as assault weapons, including firearms lawfully equipped with a bullet button to be registered before January 1, 2018, but not before the effective date of the regulation required to be adopted by the California Department of Justice for registration. Right. Uh, there's a $15 fee, and it gets into the whole how do you do it. All right, firearms that are affected by these bills. Firearms currently required to be equipped with a bullet button or similar magazine locking device include AR platform rifles and pistols and AK pattern rifles and pistols. Pretty much outside of that, if it's a Mini-14 or it's a Sega rifle or something, as long as it doesn't have those offending features, a pistol grip that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon, a thumb hole stock, a folding or telescoping stock, a grenade launcher or flare launcher, a flash suppressor or a forward pistol grip, it's fine. 
You don't need to register it. It's not considered an assault weapon. So my Sega rifle, my Mini 14, are not considered assault weapons yet, but at least not as of this bill from what I can read. All right, what is not affected by these bills? Shotguns, including semi-automatic shotguns, bolt-action firearms, lever-action firearms, pump-action firearms, rim-fire rifles, uh, typical semi-automatic pistols like Glocks, 1911s, XDs, and so on, so long as they do not possess any of the prohibited features. Revolvers, uh, any other firearm not classified as a semi-automatic rifle or pistol. All right, the last day to purchase the firearms I mentioned, you got to have them and you got to take possession before, uh, no later than December 31st, 2016. Uh, there it goes into how to register them and uh, alternatives to registration. If you're like me, the last thing you want to do is tell the state all the stuff you have because then they can just come take it. And I get it. Uh, and frankly, between you and me and the fence post, I would be Tremendously surprised if 85 to 90 percent of the owners of these guns don't bother to register them because the state doesn't know that they have them anyway. But that's just me. All right. Uh, and I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying most people aren't going to do it uh, because I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a host of a, an Internet show. Uh, I'm going to suggest that we follow the law. Uh, but uh, that then it's up to you. <laughs> Do what you want to do. All right. Other than complying with the registration requirements, should an individual possess a firearm affected by the provisions of these bills, they may uh, have the following options. One, remove the firearm from the state. Okay, you can do that. Sell, transfer, otherwise lawfully dispose of the firearm. Note that the transfer, if it occurs within California, must happen before January 1, 2017. Surrender the firearm to law enforcement. Uh, no. Uh, configure the firearm, you can do it if you want to, but I wouldn't. Configure the firearm so it no longer possesses any of the features that would classify it as an assault weapon. Wait, what? That would be, if it's an AR or an AK, that would be what everyone quaintly calls a featureless build. So wait a minute. If I have an AR-15 that has all the offending features, if I put a straight stock on it or, and, and a fin on the grip and take the flash rider off the front, it's a featureless build. It doesn't even need a bullet button, as far as I know. Uh, or, you know, some other configuration. There's all kinds of goofy stocks you can get that do away with the whole pistol grip thing. Take the flash rider off, put a, a, uh, a muzzle brake on it, and you're good to go. All right, configure the firearm to have a fixed magazine as specifically defined, meaning that the ammunition feeding device is contained in or permanently attached to the firearm in such a manner that the, manner that the device cannot be removed without disassembly of the firearm or the action. Now, the truth is nobody really knows what the heck um, permanently affixed means, and that really isn't defined yet. So that just gives you an outline. Now, again, got links over here or over there somewhere uh, for you to go to the Facebook page where I'll have uh, links to this information, the Twitter, I'll put, about, put it up on Twitter, and the, the little box with the G, that's our logo for the website. Uh, we'll have that up on the website too so you can get directly to this information and other information about these individual bills. All right, Assembly Bill 1511, that's the lending bill. Don't lend your gun to anybody. All right, what, I didn't know this, but according to California law, even before it's changed, it requires the loan of a firearm to be conducted through a licensed firearms dealer, an FFL. However, there are exceptions, one of which is uh, particularly important. Is this is the exception in Penal Code, California Penal Code 27880, as if you cared, uh, for loans of a firearm between persons who are personally known to each other. Now, under this exception, an individual can loan a firearm to a person that they personally know without having to go through an FFL as long as the gun is in, is in, uh, loan is infrequent and does not exceed 30 days. Well, this particular bill amends that so that that only applies to immediate family members, father, son, father to son, husband to wife, wife to husband, uh, father to daughter, and you know, like that. Immediate family members and also grandparents and siblings, grandparents to grandchild and each other and siblings. Outside of that, if they're shirt tail relatives, your cousin, whatever, you can't do it. Now, there are some exceptions. Uh, these exceptions include, of course, loaning a firearm to a person 18 years of age or, or, or older for the purpose of target shooting at a target facility. Uh, loaning a firearm to a licensed hunter during hunting season. The infrequent loan of a firearm for, the, for use as a prop in a motion picture, television, video, theatrical, or other entertainment production event. That means if you decide you want to lend me a gun so that I can review it or shoot it or whatever, 
You can do that under California law because I'm producing a video and it's a prop in a video. Uh, these are all exceptions here. Loaning a firearm to a person 18 years of age or older as long as the person loaning the firearm is at all times within the presence of the person being loaned the firearm. Anyway, that's that one. Okay. Senate Bill 1446, that's the large capacity magazine deal. Suffice it to say that if you have magazines that contain, that will carry more than 10 rounds and you have them legally because you had them before the previous ban, well, once this goes into effect as of July 1st, 2017, uh, they won't be legal anymore. So uh, this bill prohibits the possession of them, not just the, the previous law possessed import, uh, manufacturer, uh, purchase, or somehow acquiring them or whatever, but didn't, it didn't really uh, say that you couldn't possess them. It just was dealing with how you got them. Well, under the, under the new law, anyone possession, in possession of a large capacity magazine has until January 1, 2017 to do one of the following, if you want to be legal. Sell it to a licensed firearms dealer, take it out of the state, destroy it, or surrender it to law enforcement. Now, this is uh, an infraction. It's not a misdemeanor or a felony. The possession of a magazine capable of holding more than 10 rounds after, Jan after July 1, 2017 is an infraction offense. Punishable by a fine not to exceed $100 for the first offense, $250 for the second offense, and $500 for the third offense and subsequent offenses. The law does not apply if the individual is in possession of the firearm uh, that uh, the person obtained prior to January 2000 if no magazine that holds 10 rounds or fewer rounds is available for the firearm and they only use the magazine for that firearm. Now, unfortunately, I can't think of a gun that, that, would be an, that there's an example of that for, but if there is, hallelujah. Uh, the exceptions also accept, uh, you know, folks like law enforcement and, uh, and so on and all those folks. And you can see the other exceptions there if you want to check it out. Again, we've got links here for you to go find that. All right, assembly bill. But suffice it to say, if you have magazines that carry more than 10 rounds and it's for a semi-automatic gun, or any gun for that matter, if it's a magazine that holds more than 10 rounds, and even though it's legal now, uh, as July 1, 2017, it won't be, and it is an infraction punishable by 100 bucks the first time, 250 bucks the second time, 500 bucks the third time. There you are. I don't know if anybody's ever going to enforce that, but there it is. All right, Assembly Bill 1695, false reporting of firearms lost or stolen. Uh, this bill prohibits filing false reports with law enforcement that, it, that, that a misdemeanor or felony was committed. It makes it a misdemeanor for you to falsely report a firearm lost or stolen. This bill was, uh, was oddly conceived because it already is a crime to file a false report with law enforcement, but it just, for whatever reason, you know, it's a crime to, law, to lie to police and file false reports, but they wanted to make it another crime, I guess, for some reason. All right, Senate Bill 1235. This is the ammunition one, and this is the one that, to me, is the most onerous. The other ones, like the, you know, you got to reconfigure your AR to make it a featureless build. Okay. And if you think ARs aren't going to continue to be sold in the state of California, you're, you're kooky in the head, because all manufacturers are going to do is start shipping them as featureless builds. Ha <laughs> ha! And AKs will be doing the same thing. You'll still be able to buy them. Uh, they'll just be featureless. All right. Uh, Senate Bill 1235, ammunition. This is really awful. Commencing January 1, 2018, generally prohibits, this bill prohibits private ammunition sales from one friend to another, requiring people to use an ammunition vendor licensed by the Department of Justice to complete a transaction unless the transaction involves 50 rounds or less in a month and is between A, licensed hunters while hunting, or B, immediate family members. Again, parents to grandparents, parents, grandparents, and their siblings and grandchildren, and you know, however you want to draw the lines between from one of those to the other. Uh, two, commencing January 1, 2018, both of these 2018 so far, bans the direct mail order sale of all ammunition, meaning no more am having ammunition shipped to you. So you won't be able to go on you know, website and order ammo. They will not ship it to you in the state of California after January 1, January 1 2018. Uh, let's see. Commencing January 1, 2019, this prohibits residents, except for certain special ones, probably law enforcement and so on, from bringing any ammunition from out of state into California. Well, there goes your option to go to uh, Arizona or Nevada or buy ammunition and bring it back. Uh, which I'm dead certain that thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people will do anyway uh, because I don't know how you're going to catch them. 
Who knows? Anyway, uh, it also commencing January 1, 2019, generally prohibits the purchase of ammunition by anyone except for special people, law enforcement and the like, unless authorized by the Department of Justice to do so. I guess if they can't ban the guns, they'll ban the ammo. Uh, five, commencing January 1, 2019, requires ammunition vendors to record personal information about the ammunition purchaser and what ammunition is purchased and to submit the information to the Department of Justice, which, which must retain the information for two years in a database to be known as the Ammunition Purchase Record File. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, and six, requires DOJ to create and maintain another database of qualified ammunition purchasers and vendors. Those are the basics. Uh, they're still trying to sort it out. It's a big, long, long bill. So there you go. That covers all the draconian crap that, uh, I shouldn't have said crap, the, the very well-written and well-thought-out bills <laughs> that the state of California has passed and that Governor Moonbeam, for whatever inexplicable reason, has signed. Now, in actual practice, will any of this prevent any crime? No. In actual practice, will any of this prevent a terrorist event? No. In actual practice, does this take any guns away from people? No. Your AR, just reconfigure it. If you want to register it, knock yourself out. Uh, I'm going to tell you, most people, if they have any sense, are going to reconfigure them to make them featureless builds so that the government doesn't know they have them. Does this take away your Mini-14 or your Sega rifle or like rifle that's California compliant? No. However, I guarantee you that will be the next step, so we've got to be aware of that. Some of these are going to spark um, immediate lawsuits. We'll have to wait and see where that goes and what the plan is, and I'll let you know. And again, check the links and go see them uh, in more detail, because I can only get, over, get through so much of it here without, uh, without uh, running my voice into the ground and boring you to tears. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my channel. I'll actually have gun videos coming up in a few days that don't deal with this nonsense. And uh, just rest assured, although I live in California, I live in San Diego, Yuma's not that far. And if for some reason they outlaw every gun known to man in California, we will be shooting video on all kinds of guns in Yuma, even if I have to move everything I have out there so that we drive out there and do it. One way or the other, this channel is going to continue until I don't. And, you know, my son's younger than I am, so maybe he'll continue after that. Thank you again for watching. Please don't freak out about these too much. Hang in there. Continue the fight. Don't give up. Never, 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 never quit, as Winston Churchill once said. Have a great week. Thanks again for watching, and be safe.